You are listening to the Starter Girls Podcast with Amy Lafitte and Jennifer Loading. And whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And I'm so excited to be here today with Jennifer on this almost spring day. It's starting to feel a little bit like spring. So uh, tell me what's been going on with you. I I was going to say, so you think yesterday was a nice spring day. I think we're getting a little, like a little cold spell coming back in again. (laughs) Yes. I'm like, what is up with this bipolar weather, right? (laughs) Yesterday was so gorgeous, like 81 (laughs) degrees and sunshine. And today I'm like, no, we got like cold (laughs) coming in again. It's so, um, but yeah, no, good, a lot of good stuff. I've had a lot of things going on, meeting a lot of people. And right now I'm in the process of doing a book relaunch, which has been fun. And, you know, I always talk about building relationships. It's just a huge part of what we do in our industry. And, you know, it's not really what you know, but who you know, right? Mm-hmm. As we say. And so it's yeah. been really fun because I've reached out to, you know, a group of people and I have a handful of people. I say handful. I've actually got more than a handful, but I've got quite a few people that are actually helping me with this project, which has been really cool. So super excited about that, and um, yeah, I've got a book sitting right here on my desk that I got from our fabulous guest. I'm super excited to read that. I I'll let her talk about that in a bit, but I'm super excited about that. What, mm-hmm. So what's been going on with you this week? Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's just been, I've been really busy actually like launching my business and kind of getting things going, so I've been meeting with a lot of people. and. And like you said, it really, it's about relationships. In fact, um, Krista, who was on our podcast last week, she was talking about how she doesn't network. And she goes, I just really build relationships, but I don't think that those are two separate things. Like I think that, um, but I know what she meant by that. Mm -hmm. Like she meant what we talk about, about the, uh, the, the booty call. Yes. yes. (laughs) That's kind of her thing where she's like, you know, booty call. she said, I went to this networking group and before I even said my name or anything, they're like, no, what do you do? And she was like, I can't handle that. Like, she's like, I need to, I need to know you. You know, we gotta, we gotta build relationships. I was actually thinking in this, in the shower the other day, you know how we always do that. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about how you're talking about frog. So it's like family, it's your, um, recreation, it's your occupation, but I couldn't remember what this Goals. Is. Goals. Goals. Okay. Yes. That's so good. I'm glad that you remember that. Yes. So I know. Awesome. But I think it really does help when you're thinking of, of that, you know, like when you're asking someone more about just everything about who they are. Right. And I really love to hear the, the kind of the origin stories of like mm-hmm. why people got into an industry because most of the time, just like you and I are really passionate about health because we had a health crisis a lot of people are really passionate about what they do because they had some sort of crisis in their life as well. Right, Mm -hmm. right. No, that's awesome. And it is. It's about building relationships. And I love Krista. Like, I I love her. Her energy. She was a fabulous guest. And her podcast is just rocking. I mean, I just think she's amazing. So, um, but yeah, I I think they are networking and building relationships are very, they're simultaneous. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think you have to do them together. And you can't really, I would say you can't really, navigate through business without building relationships because mm-hmm. you can do a few things by yourself but it's a lot better when you have a team of people helping you along the way exactly you know? mm-hmm. so which leads me into what i wanted to talk about today so we have to have a little nugget on the podcast right we have our, our nuggets of wisdom here and so i was thinking about you know one of the questions that we ask on the podcast and sometimes we don't get to this because the guests kind of tell us this information without right. us asking and we really like to let things kind of flow. We don't want to be like, let's read number one, number two, number three question in order when they don't really go, right? Sure. So the question is, we ask sometimes, what makes you or your company unique? Mm-hmm. And it's funny when we ask this question because sometimes we'll get people on there that this is just very easy for them. They come out and they're like, this is what my company is about, you know, or this is what makes me unique. And sometimes, you know, they can say the company, why the company is unique, but sometimes they can't say why they're unique. And I think this is what really separates what I call like unicorns in business. You know what I mean? Because when you think about it, we're all selling something, right? And you have to brand yourself basically, you have to be different than everybody else because Mm -hmm. what's going to make, you know, when we talk about, you know, realtors, there are a lot of them. We love them. I love my realtor friends. I've got lots of them, but there are lots of them, right? So what makes realtor number one different from realtor number 10, Mm -hmm. right? It's being that unicorn and that's what makes you unique. Right. And so I love this question because it really, it just, I think it's one of those things that we have to get really good at learning to do. And there was one day, I just a quick story, I was at a networking event and I remember walking in and telling the girl, she's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I love helping people win. I am good at getting people excited. That's what I love to do. I love to see people win. And this girl came up to me afterwards and she said, 
I noticed that when she asked you what you do, you were like, I do this, I'm good at this. And I'm like, yeah, because I believe it. Right. So it's those things we tell ourselves over and over. And after a while, you kind of just start saying, saying, yeah, I'm good at this, right? And people like following people that are confident in what they're doing, of right? Course. So I thought what we could do around this question that would be really fun is what are our top three words that describe us? Absolutely. And I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> As I knew you would. <laughs> yes. We don't break the yeah. rules. Yeah. I know. We, we have to take turns talking because yes. we both like to talk. <laughs> we do. We do. That's why this it's podcast true. goes well. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I would say my first, it actually, it goes with my strength finders too. It's actually my number one quality as a, an, in my strength finders is maximizer. Um, being able to turn lemons into lemonade. And that's always been, it's been funny because even in the space of networking, I don't necessarily have to go meet a ton of people. I'll meet 10 people and really maximize every single one of those relationships. So I've learned over time that's been a really good gift for me because I don't even necessarily have to know as many people to make things happen. Um, my second one is what I've been told my whole life is I'm really good at winning people over. I don't even know what a word is for that. And I, I feel weird even explaining it because it's one of those like God-given gifts, honestly. Like if you said, if I had to like create like a, a training course on this I couldn't like I don't I don't know how I do We're it I think don't know about what that. it is yeah like maybe maybe we could we're gonna give you a title for this it's gonna be Amy's own title yes exactly but no it's been it's been really amazing like just meeting it like every time I meet somebody I think I find like lots of different things that we can we can talk about and lots of different talking points and you know I think also with my background I've always done a lot of different things so I have a lot of you know, fun things where I can relate to somebody. So I think that's part of it. But there's something else, even like when I was just a little girl. So I don't know what that is, but we need we do need to come up with like a we word. do we need to come up with something for that. <laughs> and then I think my last one is like I, I I've always been in a space of artistry in some sort of way. Whether I was you know a jazz singer, or I was you know involved in like painting, and I always had some sort of art side to me and having that like artistic creative spirit I feel like it kind of flows through everything I do and it gives me that extra little tint of something that like you said it, it makes you who you are I remember actually one time you went to a networking group and this guy goes well I know tons of people that are health coaches or whatever and he's like what's unique about you and you're like because you do get me like right. you get me and it's it's I didn't quite unique say it like that, but that was it. Uh huh. I was like, you're not going to get me if you get somebody else. It's true. Yeah. Uh huh. So I always loved that. I okay. thought you were going to tell that story actually, because yeah. I thought that was such a cute story. What well, that was a fun story, and I haven't forgotten it. I don't think that guy has forgotten me either. Like I see him every <laughs> once in a while, and he's always like, you know. So yeah, no, and I love that. And I'm thinking when you were talking about the you know winning people over, I'm like, I always I always tell people when I when I talk about you, I'm like, Amy's one of those people that like you can never stay mad at her. Like you can get upset, but it, like you're over in five minutes because she's like always so happy, and it's like hard to ever be angry with her, like ever, <laughs> like ever, ever. And so no, I think that's an awesome quality. I really do think that is a great quality that you have because you are like the sunshine. Yes. You know, like you come into the room and it's like here she comes. If you're in a bad mood, you will be in a great mood before she's done Aww, with you. That's so, so nice. I, it's, it's good to awesome. know we don't really like stay mad at each other. We were really no. angry. Now I don't, honestly don't ever have time to mad at no. anybody for any period of time. You so. don't. I know. I'm that's like I'm over. We do all together. Yeah, I'm over like ten minutes. So okay, so my three that I picked, or and these will be no surprise to you. I put my number one would be visionary. Yes. Because I love thinking big picture, and I am able. I always feel like there is a plan. There's always a second plan. There or a second or a third plan. There is always is a pivot that can be made that will take you in a different direction and I will tell you something funny about this you know how we used to have to do word problems in school yeah. uh -huh. okay so when I was a kid like I have this picture I can still visualize this sitting at the counter table doing homework for like hours trying to figure out like one word problem and my mom would come in the room and be like do you want help and I'm like no I'm gonna figure it out like there's another plan I'm gonna figure it out so I am able to see, and that's what I think is good when I help people, is help them to see past their limitations. I can look and say, you're focusing on this small thing. What's the big picture? What do we need to be doing to get you where you need to be? And so that, that'd be my number one. My number two is I'm a doer. I would like to say the word hustler. I move. I, yes. I don't st sit around for very long. And I think if there's something that needs to be done, we're going to get it done. Like I'm not going to talk about it for 10 hours. We're doing. And then my last one I put down is disciplined. Because I am extremely disciplined. I don't, um, I was talking actually to Krista yesterday about that. She's like, how do you do that? And I'm like, to-do list. I just, 
I get up in the morning, I create my to-do to -do list for the day, I know what I'm going to do, and it doesn't mean I always get it done, but you know, I, I'm going to get most of the stuff on there, and what's not done, I'm gonna put over on to the next day, so. Yep. No, I think it's, your discipline is like beyond. Like, I've never, I'm not kidding, like, and it's a muscle, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, you, and you're, art, you're already kind of like acclimated as like a, a task oriented person. So I think that definitely helps because yeah. you've already kind of got that going. But you and my dad are the most disciplined people I have ever met in my entire life. I love that. I'm so glad that you compared me to your dad. Oh my goodness, I love your dad. <laughs> I know, it's awesome. Weird. You know what I will say? I think it's all those military army tucks I had to do when I was a kid. Because my mom really? used to make me every day tuck my sheets, military tucks. Like make my bed every single day. Y'all know what's funny? I don't make my bed anymore. <laughs> like I don't, but I think that, I think no, I don't have to. But I think that's why because I had gotten into this routine as a child. Like I do this like every single day, and so I just always done. I've always put discipline in my life, and for me, it just helps me feel so much better because I feel out of control when I don't have that. I just feel like I'm aimlessly wandering in space. <laughs> yeah, that's right. not good. Yeah, we don't want so that this is fun. I love it. I We're gonna keep doing these little nuggets because I think it's good, and then our, our people get to kind of know like a little bit more about us, right? I agree. I think so it's I'm super excited. We yeah. have an awesome guest here today. She's amazing, and I met her through our fabulous Tiffany Forsberg, which I love her too. Amazing, amazing. Yes. And so she's got all these incredible people that she is like putting into my space, and I'm so excited. But uh, this gal, I'm super excited to bring on today, and I'm actually going to read some of her bio because it's so good. I was gonna like try to, you know, like sum this up a little bit, but I think her bio is really good. So Brianna Borelis is a Dallas-based strategy consultant for performing artists. She's a singer, songwriter, and the author to Performing Artists Pathway. Navigate the highs and lows on your music journey. She's also the creator to the Performing Artists Pathway online course. All right, and get this. Brianna has fronted her own rock band, and she experienced the reality television craze in its early days as a top 100 finalist on American Idol season four. Wow. Super excited. So she's kind of a little bit famous, right? Super excited. Yes. About All right. Brianna's expertise and background as a singer, songwriter, vocal and performance coach, and restaurant owner has led her to mentor and consult indie artists and bands. To help them create a solid foundation for their music business she's passionate passionate excuse me about encouraging others on their journey and aligning them with the business strategies for their music careers so we want to welcome brianna reyes to the show we're super excited to have her here yay welcome, Thank Thank you. welcome. I'm so excited to be here absolutely Thank you for having me. i know it's so fun well and one of the things we like to do at the very beginning is we have like three just rapid fire questions so people kind of get a feel for you already so um, our first question is, are you a morning or are you a night person? Oh, I'm a morning person. You're a, we like Wait, it, yeah, you're yeah. You're an artist and you're a morning I person? Know, like a weird, she's a unicorn. I am. See? Yeah, I'm, and I'm super, super organized, strategic, and disciplined. Yeah, I'm like this really strange creative. Yeah. I'm I'm so intrigued. I've been around creatives forever, and I've never met one that's so I told you the day I was on the Zoom with her, she's like... I know. I love mm -hmm. it. So, are you a, a cat or a dog person? Dog. Dog. Definitely a dog. Do you have dogs? I have a dog. Yes, it's a big old black lab, and uh, her name is Fia, short oh, for good. Fia Meta, which is Italian for little fire. I, I love, love that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I actually grew up with cats, um, but I'm pretty allergic, mm -hmm. so I was done. I mean, I think I had like ten cats growing up. Yeah, something crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, especially if you're allergic. I mean, it's hard to be a fan. <laughs> yeah. I do like cool cats because there's a dip. Sometimes cats are like eh, kind of right. snotty, but yeah. then there's cool cats that are like really neat. But I I still, cool I'm, still, I'm still. If you allergic. weren't allergic, I'd show you a cool cat. <laughs> yeah. I got a few of them. I had a cool cat. His name was Ellington. And I, I had him when I was at UNT, and he he would actually go to the, like, the jazz parties. I like that name. I was I like gonna say that's a cool name. I, I know. I like the name, <laughs> and that would be just like she walked. Is, is that a Duke Ellington reference? Uh, sure. sure. Yeah. You need it. Yeah. You don't want to tell her all her ask her all her doggies' names. Oh yeah, I've got too many. I've got too many. No, but, but they all have cool names. I know. No, my favorite my favorite story about him though is one time I couldn't go because I was sick, but he went anyway. And then later on, people were talking about the party, and they're like, "Well, you were there, right? Because Ellington was there." <laughs> How'd the cat get there? <laughs> because it was like next door. Oh. It was like, yeah, we all like lived like with yeah, the block. Yeah, the cat went to the party. I love yeah, it. he wouldn't even come in. I'm like, hang out with me. And no, he wanted to go hang out at the that jazz party. That is so <laughs> funny. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> I digress. 
Um, so what's your favorite food? Sushi. Sushi. I love sushi. I was debating between pasta and sushi, but I really like sushi. I could eat sushi every single day. Me too. Oh, that sounds good. I could too. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, well, tell everybody just a little bit about you, you know, your, your family, your background, um, how you got into your multiple careers, you know, kind of how everything blossomed. We would love to know. Yeah, of course. So, um, been performing and singing my entire life uh, from the time I was very, very young to, you know, most recently um, just do pop-up events or pop-up singing opportunities. I don't perform as much nowadays because I'm really focused in on mentoring um, artists and really focusing on the consulting side for the music business. Um, but went to Pepperdine, I did th musical theater my whole life, went to Pepperdine, was a musical theater major. After graduating, I did commercial and radio voice service in Los Angeles for, for quite some time, um, which was really nice. And I realized though very shortly after that, that music and singing was my first passion. And I was moving more into this acting realm simply because I was in Los Angeles and it was, it was easy. Um, so that's when in LA I you know, formed a band and then did American Idol. That was the year that Carrie Underwood won, the season that Carrie Underwood won. That was back in the days where like 100,000 people auditioned that year. We wrapped around the stadiums, we camped out, we had pillows, you know. And it was, it was a wild experience. I'm so glad I did it. Um, it's quite... I talk a lot about my journey with American Idol in my book, um, but it also, you know, brought me to that next phase. You know, once that was over, um, I shortly after that I actually got pregnant. Um, my husband and I were expecting our first daughter, so of course I thought, you know, I was done as an artist because now I'm a mom, and now that you're a mom, you know, who wants to see a mom on stage singing? Like that's totally like, you know, ridiculous, and no one's gonna want to see that. So I stopped singing for some time and I tell people, I'm like, I, I think I went a couple of years without singing, which um, if you're an artist or a creative and you're not exercising your talent, uh, you're gonna mentally, spiritually, physically like experience the repercussions of that. And so it's d very, very damaging when you have some sort of creative art or just something that's part of your, your fabric, your bones, when you're not doing that one thing that you're supposed to be doing, like you're gonna, pay you're gonna suffer and the people around you are gonna suffer so thankfully my husband you know was like Brianna you know if you don't start singing or creating music or doing something with music and you know now you know not only are you gonna drive yourself crazy you're gonna drive me crazy so that was really all it took and um, within we had relocated back to Dallas by that point and within a month I was already booking a gig at the House of Blues and um, started networking more with musicians here in Dallas um, did an EP, you know, things like that. So there's just all of these things that sort of developed. Um, and then as I was gigging around Dallas, I started having more babies and realized, oh my God, like this is just way too much. Like I was working full time. Um, I was doing advertising sales at the time and was working full time and trying to gig on the weekends and managing the babies. And it just became a lot. So uh, I, when my first or my third daughter was born, I quit my full time job and to stay at home. And um, I wanted to start vocal coaching at that point. A couple months later, my husband and I, we got the keys to our first restaurant. So suddenly I was unemployed and my husband was unemployed. So we were literally like overnight, like thrown into this entrepreneur space. So I always tell people I'm an accidental entrepreneur because wow. that was not part of our plan. Like we always knew we would have open a restaurant, but if I would have known that we were about to get the keys to our first restaurant, there's no way I would have like quit my cush nine to five 401k job, you know, health insurance for three kids, a baby, let alone, you know. So, uh, but what happened was that opened me up to a learning a new skill. I became the accountant for the restaurant. I dove into all the marketing because I do all the marketing um, and operations for the restaurant as well. So there's all these incredible skills, small business skills that I learned uh, through this process, which has, you know, complemented what I bring to the table as a performing artist consultant now for artists. It's, always tell people like I take a small business approach to the music industry and it's simply because of my background as a restaurant owner um, as a performer singer songwriter all of these different things so it's like you know we talk about what are the things that make you unique uh, my collective experience and all of these little you know having my hands in all these different pots like I bring a really unique perspective to the music um, industry you know arena so that's that's a big long answer to your question but yeah. that's that's my background that is awesome and that's exactly what I was thinking when she was saying all of that stuff she's had to basically jump in and wear many hats 
and the ability that the, or the fact that she's worn all those hats gives you kind of an, an advantage when you're working with these artists. So that's why I'm thinking she's talking about being you know, disciplined and structured and all of that good stuff. And, then, and I tell you, the day I first time I talked to her, I was like, yeah, she's like on this. Like, it, this is not like just, you know, random all over. Her conversations are very deliberate and what she's doing is very de deliberate. And that's why you're selling it, what you're doing. I love it. I want to jump into and ask you a question a little bit about your childhood because I think this is always fun. Because, you know, I, we, Krista said something really good when she was on our podcast. She says your strengths and your talents find you. And I often talk about this because for me, I'm creative. And what is so weird is, you know, when I went to school, I studied accounting in college because my mom had an accounting company. My parents have always been entrepreneurs. So I always understood the entrepreneur mindset. But being in accounting, you do a lot of scaling. You do a lot of critical thinking, but it's left, right, left, right, right? And so when I was a child, I always talked about how I was making fun of myself the other day. I said, I think my friends didn't like me very much because I was always creating businesses. I was always thinking of ways to make money. And how are we, I'd look at something like, how are we going to make something with this, right? My friends are like, I just want to ride bikes. And I'm like, y'all are boring. Like, I want to make some, I want to do something, right? So I, I'd send them home. I did send my friends home a lot. I'd be like, I'm done playing with you. We'll play tomorrow. Um, so my thing is, <laughs> like is I mean, that, I yeah, I'm starting my own business at seven. <laughs> so then, you know, I go to school to be an accountant, right? And, I, and then I decided I don't really like this. And so I studied some marketing, but never really pursued that. And then I jumped into network marketing thinking that that would be kind of a creative outlet for me. And I never really looked at it as a creative outlet because I love the industry, but they still kind of tell you pretty much, they give you the marketing and tell you how to do everything. And so what's interesting is when I exited out of that, then I started getting to be creative again. And it was like, here I've spent 30 years like sh putting that up in a box and it's been hidden. And then all of a sudden you bring it back out and you're excited and on fire and you feel free. And so my question to you is, is because you've been able to kind of do this creativity. So when you were a kid, did you know, like, did you, were you just singing from like day one and you just knew, hey, this is my passion. This is what I'm doing. I'm excited about this. How did this all come about? Absolutely. I, that was me. I knew that I was a singer and I knew that I loved it. I was passionate about it. Uh, back in that time, because I'm a little older nowadays, I feel like there's like music schools on every corner. Back then, if you were musical or had musical talent, the route was musical theater. You know, it wasn't like go form a band or, you know, I wish, and I love musical theater, but by the time I was 21 and uh, graduating from Pepperdine with a you know, musical theater major, I was burnt, burnt out. Like, I, I don't think I've done a show, a musical theater show since I graduated. Like I was done, sent me off my own way. But um, I knew that it was my passion. I actually thought I was gonna be on Broadway. I thought that New York was my route, you know, that was gonna be my path. Um, I knew it'd be LA or New York. And I just, I got, I fell in love with Malibu. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, I am a water person, so the beach was like really, I think, instrumental for me too. It was very, it's so healing, and there's just so many things I love about Southern California. But yeah, I mean, music has always been a huge part of, of who I am in my life. And I also, you know, I, I also learned early on that that's how I can get some positive attention was mm. through my talent because I was pretty extraordinary for a young girl, right? And I stood out. Uh, that being said, I learned the hard way in college that when people aren't showering you with praises about how incredible your voice is and who, you know, I was wrapping my self worth in my talent. Gotcha. And okay. so it took me, and I talk about that in my book as well, it's like really be beware of that because you're going to get to a point as an adult or a young adult, wherever that might be, where, you know, your mom's not like with you every second telling you how amazing you are or right. whatever that might be. Or you may not be getting the roles because now, you know, you're in a larger arena and you're not the one talented person who's going to get the lead every show. So mm -hmm. I learned um, in my late teens, early 20s that, wow, OK, you know, I have to really define who I am centered in my heart as a being, as, as a you know person outside of music, outside of talent, of my talent. Um, and once I really saw that, I could, again, you know, love yourself and appreciate yourself and have the confidence, um, even if I wasn't doing music, like, I know who I am, I got this, like, so, yeah, and I was always very hungry as a kid, too, so very um, driven. I, my family and I, or my family, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, so I always said to myself, you know, I'm never going to allow money to get in the way of me not go going to grab something, 
right so i've always had this mentality of yeah i don't care i don't care what it costs so I'll, i'm gonna make it happen like so oh, I so love it. Mm-hmm. yeah what you were saying earlier how you're like you're a doer you get stuff done like like that's what I always tell people. I'm like, if you want to get some done, like come hang out with me. Yeah, <laughs> Let's, yeah. we're gonna get it done. You can, you and I could be good friends. I know, yeah, right? Could be good friends. Be very dangerous. People, people call me when they want things done because they know I'm gonna get something done. I love that. You know, and and I love that. I love that you said you didn't let money be the obstacle. If there's something that can be done, because there's another plan. There's always another way, right? Yes. I always think uh-huh. there's another way. You just gotta get resourceful. You have to figure yeah. it out. That's gotta right. start thinking, you know? And I always tell people, like even for me, and you're probably, I don't know if you're like this, but for me, even when I'm frustrated, it, it, the end of the day, when I go to bed and I wake up the next morning, there will be another idea. Something's coming and I will and I will think of something else. And so if you can go with that mindset, that's how you get things done because you're always thinking, there's another way to pivot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah like it. Ma- money is only one resource. Exactly. There's so many other resources. People. And people yes. are really the big resource. It's not the money. Yes. So I completely agree. Well, and this will go, this will tailor right into what you were just talking about. Um, so when you're going after like a goal or a project, what is your experience, your thought process, your schedule? Like, what does that look like for you? So I'm a big believer in brain dumps. I do any time that I'm sorting through either my priorities for the, the quarter or the year or whatever that might be, I always first stop to like get a piece of paper out. I got all my colors, I have my highlighters, I have all my, I like colors. So all my markers, white piece of paper, and then I literally will set the timer for about 10 minutes and I'll just dump everything that's on the brain, like projects, even like personal stuff, like maybe I need to stop yelling at my kids so much or <laughs> whatever that, you know, mindfulness or meditation or, you know, just these priorities that I need to like be adding or taking away, right? So on, in addition to what, what I want to be focused on, it's also, uh, is there trash that needs to be taken out? You know, are there things that need wow. to go? Right. So I will, I will put it all down there and then, you know, if it's the trash, I'll put a big red X on it, you know, something like that. So. And then I start really identifying uh, if there's ideas that pop up many times, I'll circle them and lump them together so that I can see, okay, that's a, that's definitely a priority. Uh, and then you just have to kind of rank it. You have to decide at that point, okay, well, I don't have time to do all that. So I'm going to rank it top three for the quarter. And then I'm going to maybe do the next three. That's going to either, if I accomplish my three, mm-hmm. then I'll move on to that next pod, so to speak, or that becomes something later. Cause who knows if that, that other three even show up next quarter, whatever that right. might be. Yeah. yeah, so the brain dump is um, is really key for me to identify how I'm moving forward, and then from there I create a plan. Mm-hmm. So that is that is how I execute everything. And by the way, when I wrote my book, that was my same process for every single chapter. Wow. I love it. I've never heard of doing like, take the trash out with the brain dump, and actually like write down things you don't want to do anymore. That I mean, I've heard people talk about brain dumps forever. That's That's kind of like, I don't know a revelation that should try that right. I do yeah I, I don't take do the trash because I don't do the trash but I do do that I put everything on there like I have to write down animals every day like I have <laughs> just call me the animal caretaker I have oh, all my yeah I have all my kids animals so I have to write that every day even though I don't forget it I write it on there and it's my thing I, you know my things I check off well you can't put a big X on that one no I can't put a big X on that one you're right I can't I could, well, maybe I should. Maybe my kids will take over the animals, right? <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> Put the X on there. But no, I love that. And the colors. Yes. I love the colors. Oh. It's because she's an organized yes. creative. Yes. She's both. This is so funny. She's going to show up. Oh, check it out. Yes, there it is. is. This is an example of yes. what I did. Uh, can you believe uh, that? What do I call that? It looks like they're channeling. What does that call it's it? It's almost like well, that beautiful mind, like crazy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but so the top of the year, like here's business, personal yeah. home, creative. Yeah. Just, yeah, and then from there I kind of like whittle it down to like all the stuff and then I prioritize. I love this it. This is just nuts, right? I love it. This is very beautiful mind. It like, is. I yeah. like that. I forgot I had that. <laughs> and I, it, right. it allow you to relax once you get that done. You got it yeah. all on that paper. You just yeah. dumped it. That's, That's right. Good. And then That's I don't good. have to, I can sleep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Because I, as a creative, you know, I definitely, the shower, road <laughs> trips, on the road, uh, I always say there's that time like right before you're about to wake, like between sleep and wake, like the mm-hmm. Neverland time or yes. whatever. We're all like, oh my gosh. And so I have to keep stuff to write these ideas yeah. down. Because I, I also think it's just it's brilliance. It's like that whisper, you know. It is. Right. However you want to, if you're spiritual or, or religious or whatever, at the end of the day, 
that it's that intuition and that spirit like just like guiding you yeah if you're tuned in and if you care like i care right right so no, like, i agree I'm constantly like like yes. the antenna up. Where am I going now? Yeah, give me the light, yes. the direction <laughs> for the day. Yes, I agree exactly. with you on that. That's why I do my to-do list in the morning because I get up and I've got my focus. That's why I'm task oriented. It goes all on the paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my day planned out. I know. Well, and it's interesting too because they talk about that state. It's the alpha brainwave mm-hmm. state. And if you're looking at your phone, you don't have it. So, right. like, do you do you guard? your time and energy in such a way where you can try to get more alpha brain waves in your day because it seems like you're very like you said you're trying to be tuned into it mm-hmm. so i if we want to talk about ta- taking out the trash it would be really monitoring how much time i spend on my phone or social media um, i do if i'm on a project i'll, I'll turn off the phone i'll just put it away t- entirely because it's way too distracting yeah. And so I'll carve out times in my day where I'll go and check email or I'll check um, social media or I'll post and, or comment or whatever those things are. Um, but yeah, the, the, the phone is a time suck. Mm-hmm. Like a huge distraction. Yeah. So, and I need to become more disciplined in, in my time with my phone. Like I'm guilty of just allowing it to suck me in sometimes. But even like the first thing in my day, like the, I don't want to check the phone. That should not be my first step. Like. And it shouldn't be my end step either. Like I don't want to go to bed scrolling on my phone. Like right. I, I can't sleep. Like that's not yeah. that's not rest. That's not doesn't feel positive. Sometimes I'm on my phone, I just get eh. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree. Exactly. Nasty. That's good. Uh-huh. Hangover. <laughs> Fun yes. hangover, right? I love it. I that's love so it. So true. So I have a question for you. What do you love most about what you do? I always say that I wish I had a me when I was younger uh, mentoring for example like if I you know I was a theater major well no one told me to minor I wish I would have minored in business like there's so many things that I like I wish I would have known looking back now obviously everything leads to where we are today so shoulda coulda woulda whatever right. but right you know I wish I had a mentor so for me when I'm working with artists who are now looking at their music business in an entirely different light because of a simple conversation we had. Like, I love to see that spark. I love coaching and I love educating. And I love I love to empower artists. So giving them, you know, just a different perspective and way to look at their music careers so that they can create sustainability for themselves. Because ultimately that's what it's about. You know, right. I'm really not working with artists who are like, I want to be famous. Right. Like, that's I'm working with artists who love music and want to find a way to to continue doing it for the rest of their lives and that's you know they want they don't want to be struggling and poor the rest of their lives like that's just not that's not a quality right you know yeah right. so if i can help my artists you know create a plan that's very clear and strategic and show them like look xyz is going to get you here they, they just typically don't think that way yeah so i can relate to them on the artist um point but then as a strategist and you know mm-hmm organizational person you know I offer them something really different and unique that they can bring to their to their business so I I, I really I just I really love working with artists absolutely and I love working with their parents too I I work with a handful of young artists so I kind of have like two clients because I have the parent and the Mm -hmm. young artists I have a 13 year old going on 14 and her mom that I've been working with for about a year now and um, I adore them I love them but to see the like parent the mom actually like Oh my God! Thank you so much. Like, because they're just trying to help their do- their kid. Yeah, you know. For so sure. to be able to not only you know give this young girl you know like strength and vision, and then but to also support, come along the side of the mom and support. So it really feels like a team. Yeah. Um, and I'm all about team. You sold me. I love it. I'm like listening. I'm totally listening. I get it. I love it. It's a really important message I think for artists too because the the two roads we get painted are you're going to make it all the way to the top or you're going to be a struggling artist. There's no in between. And and I remember even when I was like studying jazz and I was like, well, hello, like if I'm not the thing, then like what am I going to do? And so my big plan was I was going to be a manager at Starbucks because they have health insurance. So that was my whole thing. But now I know I had a vision. I had a plan. It wasn't very good. I wish I'd had you as my coach. But um, now we live in a space where there's a side gig. There's a gig economy. And so, hello, we gig as artists. Right. So painting that picture of like, just as you could go into network marketing or you could be an Uber driver or you could ever, you could also take your art and your passion and make it your side gig 
and and like you said have that sustainability you know so i think that's a really powerful that's it like a big gap right now that we need to be talking about so i love that you're absolutely and i think also the the struggle or the challenge with working with artists is they think that they can continue just doing what they're doing and it's going to be all fine but ultimately they're going to find themselves a year from now when they don't invest in themselves investing in their careers like they're going to be in the same spot a year from now so it's really hard sometimes for an artist to be like oh my god like i don't think i can afford that but at the end of the day like you can't not afford that is that right. you know it's like mm-hmm. if you want to move forward and create momentum and, and then you need to invest in yourself you need to either invest in your education you need to invest you know because there's gaps you have Absolutely. huge gaps so you will not get to where you want to go if you're not investing in yourself mm-hmm. i feel like that's a deja vu mm-hmm. it's like did we not ever talk about that about Man. investing in yourself i think it's like a, a universal a, a universal need in many careers i mean even in what we did that That's was a conversation amazing. we would have with people that didn't want to invest in events or go to trainings and we're like why do you come in if you don't wish to train yourself yeah i don't understand that and then say something doesn't work but that to me is like you decide to run a marathon and you go out and you try it one day and you decide your feet hurt and you're like i'm over it okay first you didn't pivot there is another plan mm-hmm. that's the first thing wrong you did probably didn't commit either but why would you not study that? Why would you not keep at that and get the help that you need? Find a mentor that can help you get through that in those weak moments and kind of lead you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel like that's well, such the, a, the funny thing is, is you don't when you're in the artist space, you don't have a lot of faint-hearted people. Yeah. I mean, you may have somebody that goes, okay, well, if that's what it's going to take to be a recording artist, that may be too much, and that may not, you know. So you do get that, but I feel like you don't have, yeah. you know, like it, it wasn't like they they went to a party and signed up and we're like, I'm going to become a singer, you know, I mean, like, yeah. it's, it's just a slightly different kind of deal, sure, but sure. still, like you said, every industry, when I look back on it, and I've done a lot of different things, obviously, right. but every single time, like the things that make the difference are always the people that come into your life. It's the coaching, mm-hmm. it's the experience, it's the conference you went to and you heard somebody on stage say something. It's always the people that are in that industry that can guide you and, and create, like you said, those light bulb moments, like, right. oh my gosh, like I could look at my artistry as a small business. I'd never even heard anybody say that. Like that was like a light bulb moment for me. I'm like, that is brilliant. So you because know, they are, that's and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. ultimately, artists just, they want to be creating, they want to be writing, they want to be performing. They don't, they don't realize that, oh my God, if I learned how to look at myself as a brand and a business and market myself, then I can actually make a broader music impact because I have the skills to bring my music to people. I'm not sitting here waiting for people to just find me. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's so, you know, it's funny. I mean, just any small business, it's like the same thing. I mean... As an artist, they they are they are the the brand, so, right? Right. And, and they have to once they realize that because you know they're like, yeah, I'm gonna sell out if I'm like just telling people about my music all the time, or you know, I just want to be focused on being an artist, you know, you know, flip around. <laughs> right. Right. Oh my gosh, reel it in. Me when it's I was really, like 19. And that's great, yes. and it's wonderful and beautiful. But at yes. the end of the day, like I'm talking about sustainability here, so yeah, right. you know, you have to learn these skills. Yes. If you want to stick around mm-hmm. and be a part of the game. Mm-hmm. That's all. And I like that you use sustainability. Mm-hmm. That word. That's my one of my words. Yeah. Small sustainable changes for the win. Boom. Amen. Amen. So I talk about I talk about that in health and wellness all the time because people try to they they either do that. It's like you're talking about brand. They get into something and don't realize that yeah, you are the brand, right? And you gotta be able to do you whatever you're doing, you gotta be able to sustain it. So it's not about these what are we gonna do overnight to have success and tomorrow we ain't gonna have a job, right? Mm-hmm. It's about it's the same thing in health and wellness. It's about making small, sustainable changes for the long term. I know. Right? I completely agree. Yes. We, so I like that word. That yes. Said, sustainable. It's a really good word. Well, and I have a question. I wanted to ask you, how long have you guys been in the restaurant industry? Like, when did you open? What has that been like? Like, I'm sure there was a learning curve for you. What are, like, some of the things you, I mean, you talked about a little bit, but I'm sure you've got more you could say about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, Victor uh, is my husband, and we opened Victor Hugo's Oak Cliff in September of 2014. So we've been in the game for about five and a half years. Prior to that, he was the general manager over at Alberni's and Bistro 31. So he's been, and then, you know, in LA, he was doing restaurant consulting as well. So, I mean, he's been doing restaurant for a very long time. 
and when we relocated from LA to Dallas, it was with the intention of opening a restaurant eventually. So, um, and being close to family, because this is where I'm from. But um, the restaurant industry is very challenging, very challenging. Um, there are so many variables that you cannot plan for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm constantly in my head, like, making notes because Victor and I will write a book for, like, mom and pops. And it's hopefully we save people a lot of money because they're either going to do it correctly or they're not going to do it at all. And either way, they're going to save a lot of money. <laughs> That's good. And heartache and marriages. Like, yeah. there's just so many different things. But, yeah, it was a huge learning curve. And um, initially when we opened the restaurant, you know, it's Victor's baby. Like, it's his thing. And I separated a lot. Like, oh, this is his restaurant. You know, and then five years into I'm like, no, 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 no this is our restaurant. Like this has been blood, sweat and tears for our entire family. We're all making sacrifices. We're all like in it, like constantly, you know? And, and so it has, it has been really a, a wild ride and we're on our way to um, launch our second location in Richardson uh, and this year. So we'll be opening our second location. And wow. so it's been, it's been a wild ride. And honestly, I don't wish the, the restaurant industry on anybody, probably in the same reason why I wouldn't wish the music industry on anybody. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's just, it's hard. It's a hard business. Yeah, sure. And um, a lot of fickle, especially in Dallas, you know, we're always about what's new, what's where, what's the new restaurant right. to go to, and, you know, but the way we, Victor approaches is, like, we're going to provide excellent service, consistency, and it doesn't even have to be incredible food. It can be good food. It could be great food. But, like, we're not trying to be, like, this edgy, you know, place. We're, we're trying to provide consistent awesome service and good food every single time that's when people come back mm -hmm. I like it she said another word consistent yes. yes see I love sustainable consistent see I love we need to go to their restaurant I know I'm like well so I live in Richardson, and I will so I will oh say God. this our event on April 4th uh -huh. they are one of our sponsors yes that, I'm so yes. excited yes. about that so Thank yes you for being one of our sponsors yes awesome yes awesome. Mm -hmm. all right so I guess let's ask her one more question I want to know who your biggest influence is Oh, I feel like that's a really hard question. I was just thinking about this the other yeah. day. Someone asked me like, what, who my top eight were. Just give us a couple. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it's oh, like high right. fidelity. Yeah. Yeah. Their top five, blah, blah, right, blah. Right. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I love Marie Forleo for like the business standpoint. And she's really funny and she makes me laugh a lot. Um, I think that, uh, gosh, music, musician wise, like Pink, and Kelly Clarkson, like, I went to a Pink concert this past year, and I stood there. I couldn't even cheer or say anything. I just stood there in awe, like, wow. the entire show. I think my husband was like, are you okay? Because he's never seen me not, like, rock yeah. out at a show. But I was just so blown away. And I remember walking away thinking, why is anybody else trying to be in the music industry? Because she's, this is perfection. Like, yeah. like this is... Why is anybody even trying? Right. She is good. <laughs> she is. Uh, I always yeah. say like pink is like my spirit, my spirit animal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's, I definitely have a lot of influences like growing up in theater. Also, you know, actresses like Meryl Streep or, you know, um, even like Annie Lennox. Like mm. she's like this she's so really cool. strong woman in music. She's, she's never allowed age to restrict, you know, whether she right. continues her voice as an, an adult is like still just so powerful and incredible so I always think to myself like it doesn't matter how old you are if you're taking care of your voice you can be singing until you're 80 right yeah. you know and she's a, an incredible model for that too so it's awesome you know what I have an Annie Lennox album from the 80s I still own one is it the Eurythmics one uh -uh. this was a, this I think it was a soul didn't she have a soul album I want to say it was a, it was a from soul. the 80s hmm. maybe maybe 90s I don't maybe know I have something uh -huh. yeah I have it because I have I actually have a record player now too but I do have an LP mm -hmm. still from that's, her that's awesome you're incredible all right, do you have anything else you want to ask her? This has been amazing. I know. Well, I mean, I feel like we definitely have to wrap up. I think you actually, I do have one question just because I, I've heard that you're very involved with like charitable causes and things like that. So do you have like a, a favorite charitable cause? Uh, I'd say for me, I really, I mean, I love the North Dallas Food Bank. Um, there is such a need for um, like just providing, because for the kids, really, because mm -hmm. there's so much homelessness that, and you wouldn't even, even people have homes, there's still a need for these right. children to have food. Um, but I, I say any time that there's an opportunity to support education, education is really, really important for us. Like I always say, like, 
I want to create scholarships for, you know, again, it comes back to like my childhood of like, I didn't allow money to get in the way of me attending Pepperdine University, like, or anything. So I'm always thinking if I can create educate, educational scholarships for, you know, young people so they can get education, like, that's really, really important because ultimately that's, that's how the knowledge, the knowledge is so key and important and, and there's just a lot of uh, ignorance out there. So I like, I just think education also empowers you. Absolutely. I love this. I you are know. awesome. So, Brianna, if our listeners wanted to reach out to you, what is the best way for them to contact you? Awesome. So, definitely at BriannaRellasMusic.com. That's B-R-I-A-N-N-A, Rellas, R-U-E-L-A-S as in Sam, music.com. And on socials, Instagram and Facebook is, is the same. It's at Brianna Rellas Music. And that's the best way. Yeah. Okay. You'll learn all about my book. You'll learn all about my online course there. And um, I do consulting and coaching as well. And she has some music on there and too. And I have some music. And I, I am, have been in your website. I am looking at, um, I'm getting back in studio this year to do some, to do some singles, some original Ooh. singles. So I'm really excited about that. Cause again, it's kind of the mom age thing where I'm like, oh, I can't, you know, I'm too old for that. But at the end of the day, it's like, I have something to say. Mm-hmm. And so you're never too, I always say, you're never too old, too young, too broke too tired to like really like live that could be a song and and pink is a mom pink is a hot awesome incredible powerful mom that's That's awesome (laughs) this has been incredible 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 well any final thoughts you want to add before i start wrapping it up here um i was just going to say tell everybody the the title of your book and how do they find it awesome so you can find performing artist pathway on amazon i'll hold it up for that's the awesome book and that was really and it's it's a really practical how to guide at navigating you know your music journey everything from you know audition prep to networking to um, really battling the blues to um, handling rejection which is so you know it's so common yes. in yes. the music film any sort of industry like that entertainment mm-hmm. industry yes so performing artist pathway can be found on Amazon perfect wonderful That's so great. thank you. All right, well, this has been amazing. And thank you for Brianna for being our awesome guest today. Thank you for having me. So awesome. I love it. Like powerful information. We probably could have sat here for a little while longer. Oh, yeah. But we do have a. We do have some more shows we got to get done here today. We're rocking the, here. So, the to do girl here. Yeah, we're rocking it out. Going to be done today. So, real quick to our listeners, we want to say if you are enjoying our show, be sure that you give us a rating on iTunes and on Facebook because obviously we cannot do this without you. We appreciate you. And I think it's time to wrap up with our mantra, right? I love it. Let's do a mantra. All right. It's a great day to be brave. You are not getting any younger. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up. Be amazing. Be you. Do you. All right, you guys take care. Be safe and be kind to one another. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.